Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm Shana Searcy and I'm so excited to paint with you today. Today we are going to paint a vase of roses. Uh, so we're going to do another page in our watercolor journals and I'm not like super motivated to paint anything in particular. So I have a few things that I always kind of fall back on when I'm just not motivated to paint anything specifically, but just want to paint. Flowers are often a fallback for me. It's one of the first things I learned to paint with watercolor. Um, so it can feel very natural and very easy um, to do that and it just can be satisfying. So that's what we're gonna do today. So if you're not super interested in painting roses, I'm so sorry, but sometimes we have to do some repeat things in our journals and that's how we practice anyway. So we're gonna do some uh, roses. I'm using my Baohong sketchbook, watercolor journal, 140 pound cold press, paper 100% cotton. I have a size 10 velvet touch brush. I also have a size 4 here um, in case I want to bring that in and I have my core paints QOR by Golden uh, and they're in this lovely palette here. The palette comes separate um, and then I put the tube paints. They come in tubes and I put them into my palette and you can find links to all of the supplies and materials that I use in the description of the video if you are interested. All right, so let's get started. We're going to do just a simple vase. I'm going to use, let's see, what colors am I going to use? I'm going to start with an ultramarine. And hopefully you can see that. Let me scooch this over a little bit. An ultramarine with a little Payne's gray in it to kind of gray it out a little bit. Sorry, I just have a little yellow paint on my sweater. I just want to get it before I get it on anything. So sorry. All right, so we're going to use that ultramarine with a little paint's gray to make that navy color right here. And this I'm going to just start painting in my vase. Now I'm not going to draw anything um, in particular here, but I'm just going to make like a rounded, it's going to have a flat bottom and we're going to keep things pretty casual here. I'm going to leave some big white empty spots which will serve as some highlights. Kind of like a fishbowl shape almost. A little bit darker on the bottom here. A little darker on the edge. Let's make a little bit more. All right, I'm just going to let this dry. And we'll paint some stems that you can actually see through the, the vase or the glass after we're done, or after that's dry. All right, so let's add some flowers up here. So they're all gonna kind of be facing forward um, in a nice little arrangement, but we're gonna, I'm just gonna stick with roses today, but let's try, Let's try to push ourselves to do some fun colors, something not, you know, red. Uh, I'm, how do we feel about orange? How do we feel about like yellow orange roses? I don't know. We're going to find out. There's that. And I have like super orange. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. 
All right, so this is, this color here is a, oh gosh, what color is this? This is um, not transparent pyro orange, that's here. This, oh my gosh, I can't think of it. That's how you know when you're getting older. I have to pull out my handy dandy swatch card. So, oh, Quinn Gold, duh. This is a Quinn Gold. All right, so to start my rows, I'm gonna start like, actually we're gonna start way over here to the side. All right, I'm gonna start with some little interlocking loops here. And I am going to rinse my brush and start to pull out the larger petals. And then take some darker color, add it to the edges. All right, so there's one. I actually like that. I like this color with this blue color here, but we're gonna have to vary it a little bit. So let's go I'm trying to think if I should do a white one and keep this white and yellow orangey color going or purple. I'm just looking through my palette, trying to visualize. And if you're not really sure and you really need to start like figuring out what colors, you can just swatch them out. So I have this color. Sometimes it's helpful if you just put them next to each other. And I already have this color in my palette or in my painting. Um, so if I did something like much oranger, I could add that as a third color. Um, or I could do something. So blue and orange are opposite each other on the color wheel. So they can kind of look really nice and balanced together. Um, or we could add a red like an alizarin crimson, but I don't think that's quite the right color choice. Or we could add something. Hmm. Like a dusty purple. So purple with a little bit of yellow in it. Should be more over here. So it'd be more like this color palette. So these are all options, but I think I'm gonna stick with this trio here. That looked, felt really good at first. All right, so let's play with the Quin Gold and the Transparent Pyro Orange. So that's that other bright orange color. That's this one. I think this could look really interesting too. Let's put it like right here. Remember, they're gonna kind of like touch each other and start to pull. Out those petals. And I just want this one to look like it's kind of tucked behind this one. So I'm going to kind of go right up to the edge, but then let it tuck behind. And then I'm gonna add in some darker color and that's where, that's where the magic happens. All right, let's go back to our Quin Gold. We're gonna add another one right over here, but like tucked in pretty close. And I feel like I'm gonna have to at least do five, but you might not see the whole 
bit of five. So I'm going to do one there and do at least one more. Hmm. You know what? Let's do this orange, but I'm going to add a little blue to it. And what that does is it, it makes it more of a brown or a mellowed version. So these are very fall colors. One there. And another yellow one up here. This is the gold, the Quinn gold. But these can be even smaller. And we do have to add some greenery here to fill this out. So these are very, very loose little roses. Kind of all stacked and piled on top of each other in this little vase. Lots of white space that you'll notice. Okay. Um, all right, let's get in some sap green. Mine's very dry right now. And we're just going to pull out a few leaves. going to go too crazy. Just the suggestion of a few is enough to kind of fill in. Put one right up front here. Nice and dark kind of peeking over the edge. that feels good and then I can also I'm going to add another layer of blue to or this blue gray so I made some darker blue gray here you can see in the corner and I'm going to go back in and add another layer just to a few spots So we're going to add in, these are basically some of the darker shadows. I am going to use my brush wet to blend these out. And then I'm going to add some stems kind of coming down. And let's put a few green stems. You can see this uh, vase is a little wet, so these stems kind of bleed out. And we're also going to 
give that like just a dark lip at the top and then at the bottom A little bit darker and then I'm also going to give this a horizontal line get the impression of some water in there and This is my last little touch. And then I'm gonna let it dry. Try to leave it alone. I just wanna keep playing with it. <laughs> there we go. Okay, we're gonna leave it alone. That's good. Our nice little lovely rosebud vase. I love it. I am going to pick up my little dabs. I've made a mess of my page. I have all these little bits and bobs of paint on there. Well, this is our little rose vase. Um, when you're not sure what to paint, go ahead and fall back on something that you're comfortable painting just to get your brush moving for the day. Just gonna cast a little shadow on the ground here from that. All right, I'm Shana Searcy. Don't forget to check out the description for links to supplies and materials that I use on a regular basis, including in this video. Go ahead and like this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already, share it with a friend who you think might also enjoy these types of videos, um, and leave a comment. I'd love to hear your comments if you have questions or um, recommendations or suggestions for things you want to see in the future. I would love to hear it. All right, y'all take care. Happy painting. And we'll see you for the next watercolor journal page soon. Take care.